Amazon has acquired the production company MGM, Metro Goldwyn Mayer, $8.5 billion. So um, you've recognized this, uh, uh, this icon there. You've had this at Tom and Jerry and some movies. That, uh, that's, that's the opening part. Now, um, why is this a big deal? Amazon has already spent billions of dollars, billions with a B, on producing content for you to watch on Prime Video. Um, a lot of that, so it's not a Game of Thrones. So Game of Thrones was a huge success, and a lot of others are trying to replicate it. So that type of success is what Amazon, Netflix, uh, Apple TV+, and others are trying to replicate. So uh, with these billions on MGM, first, Amazon has acquired the rights to existing franchises that we like, like uh, James Bond, uh, Tom and Jerry, uh, Pink Panther, uh, The Voice, uh, The Voice US. So uh, uh, those are now owned by Amazon, and they can have them ready on Prime. Another part is MGM is not sitting idle. They produce. They have a long pipeline of production coming up, which also is is now within Amazon's remit, and, and eventually they'll have it on Prime Video. And uh, a key aspect to this as well is. Uh, Amazon wants to retain users for uh, Amazon's Prime service. Amazon's Prime service makes them around $25 billion a year, with a B, $25 billion from monthly subscriptions. So it's in Amazon's interest to keep us within, because there's more value there. So you're still paying your, depending on what country you're in, anywhere from 16 dirhams to 35 or 45 dirhams. Uh, I think 60 in some countries, 60 dirhams in some countries. So whatever it is. Um, the more when you pay, you keep that subscription for getting a free next day, next day delivery, access to Prime Video, uh, a lot of other uh, music, uh, uh, Amazon Music, and so on. So you have that. So the more value that's there, and I've read a bunch of books on subscriptions, and a lot of it has to do with let them pay X and then let them get much more value there. So that's the key proposition there. So if they can maintain this 25 billion, that's one year versus the 8.5 billion of. Uh, MGM. Uh, something I'm personally excited about is getting Tom and Jerry on uh, on streaming. So my kids are still young. They always ask me for streaming. They always watch parts of it on on YouTube. So that's snippets, not full episodes. And I pay for Amazon Prime today. Uh, I pay for iOS and um, Netflix and Apple TV Plus. Right. So um, I don't. There are the movies there, Tom and Jerry movies, but not the real ones from not the shows from the 60s. Um, so I'm hoping that, you know, eventually they they will make uh, their way there. One final note on this before I close is that a tech company 50 years ago buying MGM, 50 years ago, uh, companies like MGM, they continue to be very relevant because they create stars and, and stars were, were much more important long before we had our influence, influencers today. So uh, having a tech company buy MGM now is a big deal. It was, it was not something likely to happen 50 years ago. But today is very normal. It's going to say, OK, Amazon did the, as a tech company bought this. What is Netflix going to buy? What is Apple TV Plus going to buy? What are others going to buy? So that's the common question. Next, Snapchat. So Snapchat introduced in the Middle East the spotlight functionality. I was on TV uh, answering questions uh, about this. So with Snapchat, what you have to keep in mind, and, and that's, that's what I shared live uh, uh, when answering those questions, uh, what Snapchat is, you have three different modes of communication broadly, right? So there's a direct one between you and your friends uh, where you communicate uh, with them. There's the part where uh, you post stories or, or your friends post stories that you consume. And you know the stories that we know on Instagram and Facebook and WhatsApp and LinkedIn and many others, a lot of that is inspired from the success of, of stories initially on, on Snapchat. And the third part is where you follow brands and influencers and media companies to get some of their uh, uh, content as well. So those are broadly the three main uh, modes of discovering the content. With Spotlight, 
what happens is content from people who are not your friends will surface to you. Or if you're posting content there, you have much wider reach than uh, only your friends. So let's say uh, you're a content creator and you have 400, 500 friends. When you post on Snapchat, a subset of those 500 will see your content. But what Snapchat will do is they're going to look at the level of engagement of that subset of your friends. Are they engaging with this relatively higher than other videos of yours and others? They will widen that to a couple of thousand people. They're going to monitor the engagement. If it's if it's higher and, than, and better than other videos, they're going to widen that re reach to so many others. So as a content creator, you have access to a much wider uh, pool of people who can see your content. Or as you as a user, now you have, uh, if you're consuming, not generating content, you can now consume content, not just your friends, who some of them are boring or just fake, or you know what I'm talking about and who I'm talking about of your friends. So you have access to funner friends uh, without the strings and the weight that comes with it. So uh, you have much more interesting content that, that comes your way. That Snapchat service surfaces to you based on how others will be engaged with this. There is similarity there to what TikTok is. So when you you join today TikTok, post your first video, you're going to have a couple of thousand people see it. A couple of hundred at, as a worst case scenario. Those are more than you know you would you would deserve because you just got sorted on it and you have zero friends uh, on it. So the organic reach of TikTok there is big, and it's very uh, TikTok. The consumption of content there is very engaging, very entertaining, and the algorithm learns very quickly about your behavior and, and surfaces more content. So that's where these uh, uh, channels are, are are heading towards. Uh, there's a video to show you of how it works before I move on to the Snapchat's e-commerce. Hi, With e Pan so... here, computer vision engineer. My team at Snap works to help make our camera smarter so it can better understand the world around us. Last year, we introduced landmarkers, which enabled the Snapchat camera to understand individual buildings and allowed lenses to interact with some of the world's greatest landmarks. Now, we've continued to evolve the technology to understand and augment larger areas, unlocking exciting new capabilities. Using various sources of data, 360-degree images and community snaps, we're able to build up a digital representation of the physical world a point cloud representing the geometry of the surfaces around us. Combining this with 3D reconstruction, machine learning, and distributed cloud compute, we're able to map whole city blocks. Meet local lenses. Now, Snapchatters can join a persistent shared AR world built right on top of the physical one. You and your friends can step into these worlds together collaborating creatively and experiencing a whole new dimension of AR. As our team continues to build these new worlds, we hope you enjoy experiencing the power of them. AR, short for augmented reality, you'll be seeing a lot more of this, right? So with Snapchat and Facebook and, and other platforms as well. If you've interacted a few years ago with Pokemon Go, that's that was the poster child of uh, augmented reality, where you point your phone onto something and you get to, to see that and interact and move and, and change your behavior there. Now, moving on to Snapchat's e-commerce part. They've been doing much more when it comes to, it comes to e-commerce, and that's always a positive sign for them and for uh, the retail industry that, that, that I heavily focus on trying to help them to... to digitize how they're trying to move from offline retail to uh, uh, online retail. So uh, the, the part of interest here is when you don't go to a physical store, sometimes you want to see what something looks like on you. And that has always been the promise of, of AR. So you take a look at, you use your camera, and you take a look at what the product looks like on you, whether it's on a wrist like this, or uh, I've seen some apps do this one uh, for, on makeup related to this. And even long before smartphones, um, I remember I was traveling in Italy once, uh, it was for an anniversary, and I, for, I forgot. I forgot why. I, sh I should know this, but I don't. Uh, so um, I was there for uh, something personal, and I came across a uh, for sunglasses. They had like an augmented reality mirror that does this, and that was long before smartphones were, were super popular like they are today. So that's this has always been a promise for retail. So you're gonna see more and more of this. Apple has something as well on, uh, on this. So. Uh, and just get you, I'm just bringing this up for you to get used to this. 
Now, when we talk about influencers as well on Snapchat, they're doing something where um, when influencers go live, they can talk about e-commerce products or they can talk about what they talk about in terms of their lifestyle and how uh, they're trying to tell us what to do. So um, one aspect there that, I, that Snapchat is, 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 is adding and also Facebook have that and TikTok and a few other uh, non-common platforms if you want. Um, well, because you can gift uh, your, uh, you can gift the influencer. So you actually pay for these gifts. So you pay cash for virtual gifts that you would send to the influencer, and that uh, is is then revenue shared with with the influencer. So part of that goes to, to Snapchat or the platform or, or whatever platform the influencer is on, and part of that goes to uh, goes to uh, uh, the influencer themselves. So that also is another revenue stream for influencers. If you because I know a lot of people are worried about influencers and, and where they make their money, that's also one clear way for them uh, to do so. Uh, 